Hi folks, welcome to chapter 15 of the PCNC video series. Today I want to talk about tooling. Um, the key value or one of the key values behind a mill like the Tormach is the ability to have multiple different uh, mills, drills, and cutters of different kinds all set in uh, different types of holders which maintain their Z height. And I'm going to talk about it actually in the next video about what you're looking at and um, how that ties in with the CAD, the CAM, and um, the Mach 3 and tooling data, etc. But what I want to talk today about is specifically this little guy here. This is an ER16 tool holder from Mary Tool. Um, and the reason I bought this is that I used to have a TAG, which is an ER16 based spindle CNC mill. So I have some ER16 collets. The Tormach tooling system, which is basically the rest of what you're looking at here, is basically three different types of tooling. Jacob style chucks, set screw uh, end mill holders, and then collet holders. This collet holder here is the Tormach standard one, but two things about it. One, it uses an ER20 collet, which is great because that collet range goes up to half inch, unlike the ER16 that only goes up to 3 eighths of an inch. And the, but the other factor is that this guy's a hundred bucks or ninety-two dollars, not including the collet. Whereas these set screw holders are twenty-four, twenty-five dollars. So the collet holders are not only much more expensive, but they actually hold um, mills more concentric to the spindle, which is important when you're using small uh, end mills. An example would be if you're using something like a one thirty-second inch end mill, which I'll hold up right here, which is tiny. If you're off by a few half a thou or something, you may actually not really be distributing the cutting load across both flutes evenly such that it will break your bit or wreak havoc on your mill pattern. So anyways, um, the reason I bought this, aside from having ER16 collets that I wanted to take advantage of, is the fact that it was only about $50. And I'm really impressed with the quality. This is the first tool I've owned from Merit Tool, but I heard some great things about them on uh, the forums. So I want to talk a little bit today about taking this, which is a straight three quarter inch shank, and turning it into a Tormach tooling system compatible uh, uh, end mill holder or collet holder, which relies, uh, which requires me to add what you're looking at here, which is sort of a recessed groove. Tormach sells a kit for this, and what it allows you to do is then retain the Z height so that every time you do a tool change, you lift it out, put your tool back in, and your Z height's there. So let's uh, let's dive in, dive in. So here is the Tormach tool, or excuse me, TTS tool conversion kit, eight dollars and sixty-five cents. Includes the instructions, some two-part epoxy, a epoxy mixing stick, and the most important part, the Tormach groove ring. So what this will let me do is permanently affix this over my tool such that I have a repeatable Z height and if you remember how the um, if you notice there's some wobble here but if you remember the way a TTS collet works is it uses the concentricity concentricity alignment with the shaft here and it uses this uh, ground ring to maintain your Z so even if this were somehow it shouldn't be crooked because that would mean you're not making contact with the whole amount for your repeatable Z which is uh, which in theory would still work, but not as good. Um, but what I wanted to say is that even if you were off by a couple thou on your angularity here, it uh, probably wouldn't be a fatal thing. So um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that they say these should only be used on tooling which has some type of a shoulder, as this one has a thin one. Um, I guess it's a question which I can't answer today, but I wonder if you were careful if you could use it on a straight... Uh, tool like this which end mill which has a three-quarter shank um, I am guessing Tormach would never endorse it but I'm betting you could figure out how to do it same thing on a tool like this which may be great because uh, it has a three-quarter inch shank and you um, for an eight dollar part you convert it into Tormach compatible and that's a lot better than a 23 or hundred dollar um, end mill type holder Two more quick things, you need some cardboard stock or something to mix your epoxy on, and you need some sandpaper. This is 220 grit. Why do you need sandpaper? Because epoxy doesn't like smooth surfaces. And here you've got beautifully ground surfaces that we're gonna go ahead and uh, scratch up a little with sandpaper. So real quick, I'll run through the instructions. Actually, first off, let me show off this uh, tool. I'm really impressed with the quality from Mary Tool. The 
beautiful. The threads look gorgeous inside of the collet. It's balanced. Uh, really happy with this. Instructions are pretty simple. Rough up, <clears throat> rough up our area here. Rough up the inside of this ring. Mix our epoxy. You've then got three to five minutes to work. Put some epoxy on the inside here, maybe a little bit around here. You don't need a ton, and you'll have some seep out. Slide your ring over, and then what we're going to do is actually put this in the mill, which ensures that it pulls this up and it holds it square. Okay, roughing this up. And roughing up the inside of the ring here. And then go ahead and wipe these off with a damp rag and then let it dry after you have sanded them a little so that there isn't debris in there. Okay, before I mix the epoxy, uh, I want to make sure my mill is set up with the um, draw bar. My power draw bar is ready, my compressor's on. And then I'm also going to put a piece of cardboard underneath the uh, underneath the spindle. Why? Because odds are some epoxy might drip out and you definitely don't want that getting on anything. I always like to have a couple of q-tips and toothpicks as well as paper towels with me when I use this stuff and so this got the directions here state to fold it over, open it, and I'm only going to use it for this one project so I don't really care if I mix a bit more than I need. In fact, I'm probably going to try to empty it all out just so that I know I got a decent ratio of the two parts. Mixed up plenty good. Now let's see here. I might try using a toothpick to put this stuff on. So I'm running out, of, running out of camera time here. I'm going to wipe this off and then get it over. And... In the spindle. Okay, it's in the spindle and I use the toothpick to clear up the excess. And then it says to let it uh, sit, stay in the spindle until it dries, which I usually use my excess here. A good way to tell when it's dry. Okay, it's been over 10 minutes, plenty of time. Take a look. You always want to leave a tool in your TTS when you let the draw bar close. And there we go. Actually, let's go over to the desk and take a closer look. Looks good. It's on there nice and solid. Importantly, there's no uh, epoxy on the shaft and none where the uh, interface is here with this ground surface. So that's the most important thing. Um, you know, I may try to clean some of this stuff up on the bottom here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so, pretty happy with that. Went well. A couple parting thoughts. One is that you may want to wear a face mask or do this in a well-ventilated area, especially if you're sensitive to the fumes. And finally, you always want to have this surface, uh, keep the surface clean anytime you're rounding a tool, but even more importantly, when you're committing uh, a permanent a change to a tool, I probably should have wiped that clean with a, a rag just to make sure it was okay, but um, I will do some measurements on this later, make sure the runout and the repeatability is okay, and report back. For now, that's all folks. Thanks.